This is my basement. This is what it looked like when we bought this house last year. And in this video, I'm going to be transforming it into my dream home office and library. Here's the layout. Our basement is made up of a central hallway that leads into three separate rooms, Studio A, Studio B, and the utility room and crawl space. When we bought this house last year, my husband and I very quickly agreed that the basement was kind of perfect for me to transform into my work from home situation. I've been a full-time YouTuber for several years now and I've always had to make it work in one teeny tiny, generally 10 by 10 or smaller extra room. So the idea of having two rooms each one being bigger than any office I'd had before, was a little overwhelming, but also a major upgrade. I didn't wanna do a huge makeover before we moved in or too soon after we moved into the space because I wanted to give myself time to adjust, see how I used it, what worked, what didn't, what I felt I needed out of my space, what was maybe excessive or unnecessary. So I decided to do the bare minimum to get set up and functional in the space and spend a year using the space, working, in the space before spending too much time or money on it. In this video, I'm going to be focusing in on Studio A. That's the room we're transforming today. So let's take a look at how this room was organized for the past year. Up till now, this room has been my filming room. So this half of the room was for filming talking head videos, and that half of the room was for filming tabletop videos. Studio B, the smaller room, was where I had my desk and computer and spent many, many hours a day emailing and editing mostly editing. <laughs> While this layout worked okay for what I needed it to do, there were definitely pain points and things that were impacting my day-to-day -day productivity and mood and happiness, to be honest. Using one half of the larger room as my talking head set was working well for me, so I didn't want to change that. But trying to fit my tabletop setup between two doors in this corner was a bit of a nightmare. Technically it fit, but every time I was filming a video here, I would get incredibly frustrated by how cramped I felt between the two doors, the fact that I had to move lights or tripods to be able to open either of the doors to get in and out of the room or to access my closet. I never had enough storage space for all the things that I typically would need while filming, so I had to have extra chairs and tables haphazardly surrounding me with all my supplies on them, which I would invariably knock over when I tried to stand up in this cramped, overcrowded space. It was a lot. And Studio B wasn't serving me much better. Studio B feels significantly more like a basement. There's a lot of extra plumbing in the ceiling and the windows are much smaller and look right out at the beautiful view that is the side of our patio and our air conditioner. Because those windows are east facing and so low to the ground surrounded by taller things, I was really only getting daylight in the first couple hours of the day. So it always felt a bit dark and cramped, like working in a nice cave. <laughs> And maybe that wouldn't bother some people, but I've learned over my three decades of life that I am very impacted by my physical space, by my environment. Not only does it impact my emotional state and my mood, but it really impacts my productivity. So I decided the best way to address both of these issues was to swap rooms, to bring my desk and computer setup, my editing bay into Studio A, and to move my tabletop setup into Studio B. In moving my home office into the space, my desk setup, I needed to figure out the best way to accommodate these two distinct zones. I wanted part of this room to be my home library, both for personal use and enjoyment, but also as a permanent set for filming my talking head videos. And I wanted the other half of the room to be a really practical yet aesthetically pleasing workspace for me to do all of the editing and administrative side of my job. I had a live stream with my patrons where I talked through all of the things I was trying to accomplish, all the things I was worried about, and they were super helpful as always with helping me to troubleshoot and figure out what I could do to best use the space that I have. So with a lot of thought and the help of my patrons, I came up with a layout. Looking at the original first, this was the layout of Studio A, one large room with two main filming areas. And this is the new layout. I decided to put my desk perpendicular to the wall so that I could face the beautiful home library area of my room and really get the most enjoyment out of it. And also because 
I don't know about you, but working from home alone, I don't love sitting at a desk facing away from the door. <laughs> Not that I think someone's gonna just randomly appear in my house, but my husband has startled me enough times just by coming down the stairs quietly. And I am a very easy to startle person that I knew that I would feel better if I found a way to position my desk where I could see the door. It also allowed me to use the desk itself as a bit of a room divider between the two spaces so that they could feel like two distinct zones or almost two distinct rooms while still fitting together as one cohesive space. So with a plan in hand, it was time to empty out this room and get started on the work. One of the few things we did to this space when we initially moved in was paint because all of the rooms were painted colors that were not my husband and my cup of tea. But you might have noticed that the dark green wall paint doesn't extend all the way around the room. That's because I like to bounce light off of the walls and ceilings when I'm filming my tabletop. I find it gives the most natural soft light and there are fewer shadows. So I specifically painted a portion of the room white while the rest of the room was the dark green. So the first thing to do was to paint the white areas of wall green to match the rest of the room so we could have one cohesive wall color. This gorgeous dark green paint is Adventurer by Bayer. It's the same paint we used in our bedroom. You can check out my bedroom makeover here if you missed it. We're obsessed with this color. It's such a gorgeous, deep, warm green. It's stunning. We also decided to replace the floors, which was the most expensive part of this whole makeover. We did the floors on the other three levels of the house when we first moved in using engineered hardwood, a beautiful deep stained oak. And our initial plan was to use the same oak flooring down here in the basement so that everything would just be the same. But the more we talked about it, both the cost and also the slight impracticality of using real wood in a basement caused us to pivot a little bit. And we found this flooring, which I think was a great alternative. It very much has the same feel as our floors upstairs. It's a similar, very wide board with some sort of rustic knots and natural aspects of the wood and the dark warm tone is very similar, but this is a vinyl and that means it's much more durable for a basement and significantly more affordable. It was probably half the price to get enough flooring to do the entire basement than to use the flooring used in the rest of the house. So I think we made the right choice. Once we had the floors installed, it was time to start working on the trim and we chose a very similar flat stock trim to what we've been doing on the upper levels of the house. It's still a nice tall baseboard, but it's just a little less stately, I guess, than what we did upstairs, which also helped to save a little bit of money, which came in handy because we also had to do crown molding in this room, which is not something we've been doing in other levels of the house. But because of some quirky aspects of this basement, we had no choice but to replace the old crown molding with new crown molding. Since we are doing the trim in here already, we also redid the door frames with matching flat stock and did something really exciting in my opinion, which was replacing the closet door with a barn door. I have always wanted a barn door, even before they became super popular and were everywhere for a while. I've always thought they were so cool. And while initially it was not in the budget to get a barn door, we managed to find one singular one in stock at Home Depot that was hugely discounted. It was the same price as a really basic standard door and we had needed to get an extra door for another area in the house anyway. So we decided to replace the closet door with this barn door and to use the door that was there in the other spot in the house. And I could not be happier. I love having a sliding door, having this barn door instead of a door that swings out. It makes such a huge difference to the usable floor space in the room. My husband replaced one of the light switches because they didn't match and we put nice, new plates on all of the plugs and switches just so they would look clean and fresh. And I replaced the doorknob with a nice black push doorknob, which is great for practicality sake when I'm coming down to work in the morning and I have my coffee and my water bottle and my phone and a bag with stuff in it. My hands are full, it's awkward. I can use my elbow to open the door instead of struggling with a round doorknob, <laughs> which seems like something that's not a big deal, but it was a point of contention. It was something that bugged me and got in the way and was frustrating literally every single day. And I spilled my coffee more times than I would like to admit trying to hold it in 
the crook of my arm while opening the door while holding a few too many things. <laughs> okay, so we've made a lot of progress in here. So I wanted to do a bit of a check-in. We moved a bunch of the furniture in. I got these three bookcases on Facebook Marketplace for $150 total, if I'm not misremembering. They're not like really high quality solid wood. They are a veneer, but the veneer looks really nice. I like it. But yeah, this is a major upgrade for me. This is sort of the foundation of the home library part of this room, which is really exciting to see it start to come together. It's only phase one. Eventually, at some point in the future, we'll be doing phase two, which will be building bases for these so that they can sit closer to the ceiling so they look more like they fit the space using trim around the edges to really finish everything and again, make it look sort of built into the space. Moving up to the ceiling, you can see the crown molding that my husband installed and I helped to do some of the um, like caulking around the edges to make it look nice and crisp. It's pretty much done. We've done one layer of sanding. We're gonna sand it all one more time and then touch up all the paint so it's nice and crisp. We also have these new lights. Of course, these are from Ikea. They're their cheapest pendant lights. They're much nicer than what was in here before. If I can find a beautiful matching set of vintage lights on Facebook Marketplace that work with this room, I will eventually replace these, but these were like 12 bucks each. And we have Hue light bulbs in them so that I can adjust the lighting exactly to color, which is awesome for while I'm filming in here. It's already been super useful, so. I do have furniture planned for this wall. I have an armoire, which hopefully will move down soon. It is very heavy so we're kind of putting it off but it is going to go here and kind of finish off this corner storage for my filming equipment so the tripod I'm currently using to film this my giant light on the stand that stuff is going to go in here so it can stay out of the way these were another Facebook marketplace find that actually perfectly match or almost perfectly match the bookcases which is amazing so these are mirroring the L shape of the bookcases over here on the opposite corner to kind of enclose the library space which is really cool. So I'm going to be able to store more books in here, plus there's covered storage space for other less sightly things that I maybe also want to store, which is very exciting. And I believe I got the two of these for $50 for the pair, which is amazing. One thing to keep in mind is that only one of them, this one, has a nice veneer top. They were made to be stacked, this one on top of that one. So my plan, which I'm really excited about, is to build a custom cushion that fits the top of this that I can Velcro down to keep it nice and secure for the cats to sleep on, because the cats are already obsessed <laughs> with these cabinets. They're spending a lot of of time sleeping on top of them while we're in here working. So this one is going to become a big cat bed basically for them to hang out in here. And then this one, because it has a nice top, I'll probably use just for displaying things. I'll just style it like a shelf. Probably we'll put my typewriter up here. Some other decor items just make it look cute. So turning this direction, this is the home office side of the room. So my desk is going to go right here. If I measured correctly, hopefully, they should be pretty much exactly the same width. So it'll look really nice and sleek. So I'm very excited about that. This helps to visually extend that room divider basically for the two zones, the two spaces of the room. As of right now, I think I'm going to keep this corner empty just because we have our new sliding door, which I'm very excited about this barn door, but I definitely want to keep it nice and free for that to move and just to have room to maneuver my chair around, have lots of space. Turning over to this side, I have this section of wall over here. I wanted the secretary desk here so that when it's open, if I'm filming at it, I can use my bookcases as a bit of a background. But I am still searching on Facebook Marketplace for something to put here. I would love to have something with a little bit more storage right there that I can use for office work type storage. This is kind of the last project that I didn't mention. The backs of these are not super cute because they're meant to be up against a wall. So I'm thinking my current plan is to use the same fabric I used to make the cushion for that one to just cover the back of this so that it matches and just for it to look a little bit nicer. So that's the update for this room. That's how far we've come. I'm really starting to see the vision. It's starting to feel like it's coming together and I can't wait for this to be my day-to-day -day workspace. It's so bright in here. It looks so crisp and fresh and we haven't even finished touching up all the paint and everything. I just feel like this is going to be a major upgrade for my mental health and quality of life for most of my work hours to come in here. And then also to be able to use this side of the room as my 
my adorable, cozy, mini library space, which is something I've always wanted, always dreamed of, and I've never had more than one bookcase to my name. <laughs> so the fact that I now have three, maybe even technically five if you count those two, plus I still have my old bookcase, it's just in the other room down here, I'm feeling pretty spoiled. So very exciting. And as of right now, all the furniture in here is secondhand. 99% of it's from Facebook Marketplace, with the exception of my desk, which is new. Okay, so now we've made enough progress around the room that it's time to build the desk and fingers crossed it fits where it's supposed to go. I measured so many times, so hopefully I didn't mess it up because ideally the desk is gonna fit right here behind the shelving unit. My office chair is gonna fit basically exactly where I'm sitting and I'll have more than enough space to roll away from the desk, roll close, have a little bit of breathing room around my desk so I'm not like squished in a corner. Hopefully that's how it works out. This video was kindly sponsored by FlexiSpot and they sent me their EC5 standing desk, which I am ridiculously excited for. I have wanted a standing desk for going on five years at this point. I'm ridiculously excited to be able to stand when I need to, sit when I want to, and eventually get a walking treadmill so I can actually get my steps in while I'm editing a ridiculously long video, <laughs> so. This is long awaited and I am very, very excited to finally put it together and put it to the test. FlexiSpot makes super customizable standing desks that you can customize with your preferred color and size of the desktop and the frame. I personally went with a 55 inch desktop in the bamboo with the EC5 black base. I decided to go with bamboo because it's environmentally friendly and durable, and I've just always really loved the look of bamboo. Because this room has so many dark colors going on with the dark flooring, dark furniture, dark walls, I thought a little bit of a lighter desktop might be nice to balance things out. I love that FlexiSpot makes high quality standing desks that are also at an affordable price so anyone can get into the standing desk game and get the benefits from using a standing desk. As someone who spent the first 25 years of my life super active, dancing many 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 hours a day, transitioning to a work from home desk job where I spend many 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 hours a day sitting in front of a computer, I have really noticed the effect on my body, especially my back and my hips, my legs, my shoulders and my neck. And even buying an ergonomic chair wasn't enough to counteract just the sheer number of hours spent sitting. So I am so excited to be moving to a standing desk where I can allow my body to be in a more natural position while I'm working. I can switch from one position to another if I'm starting to get sore, give my body a break, it's gonna be fantastic. So I know I mentioned that my original idea was to use the same fabric I'm using for my cushion to cover the back of this unit, but I very quickly realized that was not going to be as easy to do as I'd hoped. So I pivoted and I bought some contact paper online. I didn't love the contact paper as much when I got it in my hands as I thought I would when I ordered it. It's a really light beige sort of woven looking texture, but in person, unless you're really close, it pretty much just looks like an off-white flat paper, which is not really what I had been going for. So I probably eventually will replace this with something a little darker with a little bit more interest to it, possibly even a matching sort of walnut veneer style contact paper to the front of the cabinets, but it still looks better than the original discolored sort of cardboard looking backing. So still an upgrade. One of the things I was most excited about for this room was my home library space and getting to bring all my books in and fully spread them out and not have books in piles on the floor anymore and shoved in boxes. So I celebrated by doing a live stream with my patrons, organizing my bookshelves, putting all my books away, which was so much fun. And while don't get me wrong, I'm sure I will reorganize my bookshelves many times in the years to come, I'm pretty happy with what I ended up with. If you want to see a more in-depth bookshelf tour explanation of my organizational system. If that's something that interests you, let me know in the comments because I could definitely talk about it for hours. <laughs>
As I mentioned, this is phase one of the home library. Eventually the plan is to sort of build out these bookcases so they look built in. But in the meantime, we have a little bit of a gap to contend with. And originally in my filming setup, I'd only had one bookcase in the larger alcove. So I had space for a little table with some decor and a lamp on it in the background. And I really liked that sort of additional warmth of a little bit of light behind me. So I decided to go with something similar, but the space was smaller, so I couldn't use the same table. And and I started with a TV table, which worked, it fit in the space, but it just wasn't the right vibe. So I ended up replacing it with this little table, which I think is perfect. It fits in with the bookcases and the shelving units. It has a similar dark wood tone and it's really the perfect size to fit in this little spot and more than enough space to have a vase with some dried grasses and flowers to hide the plug on the wall and also a couple stacked books with my lamp so I can still have that warm glow behind me if I choose to. I also managed to find a little cabinet that I felt was perfect for my office space. I was going back and forth on what artwork I wanted to use in this room because I really didn't have that much free wall space to put art up on the walls and one of the prime spots for art was over this little cabinet but I remembered that we had an Ikea mirror that we bought when we first moved into the house that we planned on using in our front hall and when we brought it home the tone of the wood looked so different than it had in the store that we didn't feel it fit we didn't feel like it looked right in the space so we just put it away in storage and hoped that we would eventually find a use for it and I realized that it would look so perfect in this space help to reflect the light even more or making the room even brighter. I think it works perfectly here and I'm so glad that I remembered its existence, <laughs> but it did mean I had less space for artwork. There are some areas where I might end up adding art in the future, but I knew I wanted to add some art above the secretary desk and I'd had some different ideas about maybe doing some sort of gallery wall, lots of smaller pieces of artwork, but I was going through some boxes. I came across this painting, which was painted by my great grandfather, my dad's grandfather, and I've always loved this painting and I always loved that I had that connection with my great-grandfather who I never met that we both love art and painting so I brought it down to see how it would look in the space how it was size wise and I just immediately knew that it was perfect for the space it was absolutely what needed to be here not only did it fit the warm cozy vintage vibes of the home library side of this room but it just makes me so happy to look at it and to know that it was painted by family so absolutely absolute perfection. As I mentioned, one of the reasons I was most excited to use this space as an office space and get to be in here working every single day was getting to appreciate the beautiful windows. So I decided to replace the long floor length curtains that we had in here before with some nice short sheer curtains. I really love these. They have a little bit of texture to them. They're a slight off white, but because I decided to double up with two panels per window, even though one panel is big enough to cover it, it adds a little bit more privacy and I love how the light filters in through these. It's so gorgeous. I am going to be adding more opaque curtains eventually because I do sometimes need to be able to block out the light, but right now I'm just reveling in how amazing it is to be in here during the day and get all that beautiful light shining through, so I'm not ready to hide it away just yet. I mentioned that we had an armoire that we were going to bring down and put in the home library side of the room for storing my tripod and my lights when I'm not using them for filming, and we do still have the armoire, but Unfortunately, it's still in the garage. <laughs> I have tried for weeks and weeks, months even, to get someone to help us move it <laughs> from the garage to the basement, literally trying to hire and pay people to do it, and it has been impossible. I had a moving company quote me $350 <laughs> for two guys to move this armoire downstairs. I just couldn't do it. That's more than I spent for the armoire itself. I think I paid 200 bucks for the armoire, so that was a no-go. Luckily, a friend didn't need this giant fake plant anymore, so I put it in this space so that it wouldn't look so empty, <laughs> which is fine for now, but I would really like to be able to have my armoire for storage. So we'll see if that ever happens. That is the armoire saga. It's been great. <laughs> 
Another saga was trying to figure out the stupid cushion for my cats. Shame on me for trying to be a good cat mom because I swear to God, <laughs> this was so awkward and so much of a struggle. Fusing together the foam pieces to make one large cushion was the easiest part by far, but trying to figure out how to make this cover. To be fair, I wasn't using a pattern. I didn't even particularly plan it out ahead of time. I just decided that I would play it by ear <laughs> and figure it out as I went, which is not normally how I approach things. And I have now reinforced myself that it's not the way for me because I ran into problem after problem. It was a bit of a nightmare, but eventually after many hours and a few tears and some blood as well, because handling needles late at night is always a bit of a hazard. I finally have a cushion that I'm happy with. It is not perfect. Don't look too close at those seams. They're not perfectly straight, but you know what? It's functional. The cats are obsessed with it. I think it looks really nice. Not only does it have a Velcro opening so I can take it off the cushion and wash it if I need to, but the cushion itself is Velcroed to the shelving unit so that if my cats launch themselves off of it as they are wont to do, it's not gonna go flying, knocking things over and breaking things or just causing them to lose their balance and hurt themselves. Safety first, as I always say. And the cats are already obsessed with it. Chewie and Yoda both love sleeping on it. It's their new favorite place as well as sitting in the windowsills. So 10 out of 10 would do again, but next time I will make a pattern first. <laughs> and at this point, we're really getting to the final details of the space. I had this hanging planter from Ikea with a fake trailing plant that I wanted to put somewhere. And I thought putting it in this corner behind the desk was kind of the perfect spot to add a little bit of interest to this wall that can't really be decorated because it has to stay clear for the barn door to slide freely. So this adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of something in that corner. I also styled the top of my secretary desk, the top of my cabinet, the shelving unit that's behind my desk, and all the shelves of these lower shelving units. I did originally buy these for more book storage and they will eventually become more book storage because I definitely won't stop buying books. <laughs> but as of right now, the three bookshelves behind me are enough to hold my 430 odd physical books. So I figured out other ways to use this space and as needed, I will be moving those to other areas so I can use those shelves for books as I acquire more. And with that, I think we've come to the end of this transformation. Let's be reminded of what this room looks like before. Messy, no coherent design or style, not particularly aesthetically pleasing, a bit chaotic. And now let's look at its current state. I love how this turned out. I love that there are two distinct spaces that have a little bit of their own vibe, a little bit of their own feeling, but it still feels consistent throughout. It still feels like it is one designed room. Everything has its own place. Everything is curated and styled and specifically chosen. It's super practical with a huge amount of storage for all the things that I need need to put away, lots of covered and closed storage, as well as open shelving. And it just feels so good to be in here. I've been working in here for a couple weeks as I finished the final touches and I knew it would be good for my mental health, for my happiness, for my mood, for my productivity, but I think I underestimated how much of a difference it would make. It's been absolutely amazing. I love coming down here to work. I feel so much more invigorated. I feel more energetic. I'm just happier in this space. And and the cats are obsessed with it. They're in here with me every single day, hanging out on the cat bed or in the windowsills. They like to try to climb under my monitor to get from the shelving units onto my desk so that they can walk across my keyboard because they are cats. <laughs> They love going into any cabinet with an open door and exploring. I'm so, so glad that I decided to do this and to make this change, even though it's been a huge amount of work and taken way more time than I initially expected. So much effort, especially on my husband's part. He did so much of the heavy lifting, so much of the hard work in here, and he just did an amazing job. I'm so grateful for him. And I'm so grateful for all of you for allowing me to do things like this by watching my videos and liking them and commenting by becoming patrons and supporting me that way. This is my dream workspace and I can't wait to use it to make even more hopefully entertaining content for you. Thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out. The link is in the description box down below and in the pinned comment. I love 
my flexi spa standing desk. It's another thing where I knew I would like it. I knew it would make a big impact on my day-to-day -day life, my happiness, my comfort, my productivity. But again, I underestimated how great it would be. If you've considered a standing desk, but you haven't pulled the trigger yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> it's actually amazing. I'm kicking myself for waiting so many years to get one of my own. I love it. I have my perfect seating position and standing position programmed. So I just have to hit one or two to get it to the right height, but I can make tiny little adjustments if I need to. I am regularly switching between sitting and standing while I'm working, and it's really helped how tight my hips have been and my back pain. I have an old back injury, so back pain is pretty normal for me, but it's been a lot better since I've been able to switch between standing and sitting and just change up my position more often. So all that to say, thank you again so much to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Thank you for sending me my standing desk. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> I love it so much. Do check them out. Supporting my sponsors is an amazing way you can support me as well. And with that, I think we've come to the end of this video. Months in the making, literal months, <laughs> but so, so worth it. I love this space. It feels so amazing to work in here. And I really hope you enjoyed seeing the transformation from what it was before to what it is now. Thank you again to my patrons for all your help, specifically with this transformation, helping me figure out the layout and how to organize my workspace, helping me organize my bookshelves, y'all are the best. If you at home want to join us, feel free. It's an amazing community full of incredible humans. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a series of emojis in the comments down below that you think best represent the after of this space. I'm really curious to know which ones you choose. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.